All right, Shalom. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. And once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. That's in the ancient Hebrew. That's for those of you that are new to these videos. The Heavenly Father's name, his true name, is Yahweh, and his only begotten Son's name, the one that you know as Jesus Christ, his true name is Yahweh Shai. And yes, he looks like a so-called black man. As a matter of fact, if he was on the planet Earth right now, he'd, he'd be called a, a, a black man. He'd be called a, a Negro. Okay? Hell, he'd be called a nigger. Okay? So you get the picture. Excuse me. All right. So um, I was watching this video here that was put up by, uh, uh, that was put up by the brother Yawakanan. Yawakanan, my man, Yawakanan. And I met that brother. <laughs> A uh, cool brother, man. Kind of reminds me of my older... He looks like my older brother, Victor. Uh, uh, you know, my older brother, he spent some time in England as well. Lived in Manchester. Anyway, um, but he was born in uh, St. Lucia. All right? My older brother. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is his channel here. Uh, the brother Yawa Conan from uh, uh, GMS London, England. And uh, this is his channel, Hebrew Israelite Yahawadah. And uh, the title of this video is Black Mirror, which is a, a TV show, 2023 season six, Demon 79, predictive programming, World War Three. So without me, you know, trying to explain it, what you're about to see, I'll let the brother Yawa Khanan explain uh, why he did this video and the message behind it. And then, as he was bringing out the information, it reminded me of a scripture which I'm going to share with you brothers and you sisters that watch these videos. Hopefully it's edifying to you as well as exhorting. So without further ado, let's jump into it. To you brothers who are teaching the 100% truth on the highways and edges. So... I just want to do a, a quick thing on this uh, Black Mirror 2023 season six on the last episode that they had out called Demon 79. Demon 79, all right? It's the season, it's Black Mirror's latest season. I believe it's the last season. This is the last episode of the season. This is season six. It just came out probably about a few days ago, three or four days ago. It came out. Now, let me show you addictive programming once again at its best right now you should know what predictive programming means now for the purpose of this video i'll go into the definition predictive programming That also reminds me of a scripture, predictive programming. Matter of fact, let's get the uh, definition. Okay, you see, they're, they're, not, <laughs> they're not telling you too much. Let's read this. This is from, uh, hold on, let me uh, put this on. Do not disturb. Okay, so this is from the, o the Ohio State University. Dated April 18th, 2018. The Psychology of Extraordinary Beliefs. Predictive Programming. Uh, Daria Beaver by Daria Beaver. 
Predictive programming is theory that the government or other higher-ups are using fictional movies or books as a mass mind control tool to make the population more accepting of planned future events. Now notice it says it's a theory when in actuality it's a fact. And the reason why it's a fact is because it lines up with scripture. If you go in the book of Psalm, the 64th chapter, let's go to the book of Psalms, the 64th chapter, Psalm 64. Psalm 64, beginning at the fourth verse, uh, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. The perfect are the Israelites. The day is talking about the wicked elite of Esau. Because when you read the second verse, it says, Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Who's the secret counsel of the wicked? First of all, who's the wicked? Esau, the Edomites, Malachi 1 and 4. And they have a secret counsel. And they go under many names. One of the most popular as of late is the Illuminati, which the word Illuminati means holders of the light. All right. These are uh, people that claim to be the smartest people on the planet Earth. Okay. They are the holders of the light. And that's the elites of Esau. Just like the ancient Babylonian Empire, you had what was called the Chaldeans. They were the Magi's and the smartest people in the Chaldean or in the Babylonian kingdom. And they were known as Chaldeans. They were the elites of the Babylonian kingdom. So it's the same thing in this kingdom, this kingdom of the Edomites. They have their top elites and their top elites practice wickedness. That's why when you go in Job 9 and 24, it says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. This planet earth is being ruled in wickedness. It's not being ruled in righteousness. The wicked is ruling. That's why when you go to the book of 2 Peter 3 and 13, it says, matter of fact, let's get that real quick so I can solidify the point that I just made. You know, we do these videos to edify you that really believe in this knowledge and this truth. You that's really seeking for the for the hundred percent truth. That's all we have. That's all we have to offer you here. You know, at GMS, beginning fell the pastor on down. All we have to offer you is a hundred percent truth of what the heavenly Father is saying concerning these scriptures. And we don't need no gimmicks. We don't need no no fancy thrills. All we need to do is rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly break down these scriptures. That's all we need to do. Now, here's, my, here's the scripture that backs up my point. This earth right now is being ruled in wickedness. Now, those of, no, those of us that know the truth, we look for a world that will be ruled in righteousness. Here it is right here. Second Peter, the third chapter. I'll just go right to the point. And, and this is a quote from the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter. Peter's quote in Isaiah 65. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, where can you find that promise? In Isaiah 65. The 65th chapter. Look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. See? Because the world, the, the world we are in currently right now is being ruled by wickedness. Okay? And like I said, this is a direct quote from Isaiah the 65th chapter. So going back to this predictive programming. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Psalm 64. Which, again, the second verse, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Again, as your Edomites, starting with the top banking families and their priesthood, their magis, their Chaldeans, just like the ancient Babylonians had their magis, they had their Chaldeans. It's no different with Esau, okay? And again, collectively, they call themselves under many names, Illuminati, uh, these secret societies, you have the Skull and Bones, you have the, uh, uh, you have the uh, Bilderberger, Bilderberger Club, which was named after a hotel in Austin Beak, 
Holland, I believe it was, Austin Beak Holland, called the Bilderberg Hotel. That's where they, they first had their meeting and they became known as the Bilderbergers, right? So they go under many different names, these secret elites of Esau, the wicked. So they work in their insurrection, right? Reading on, it says, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privately. They say, who shall see them? And again, before they actually do uh, their wicked works, like case in point, 9-11 is a great example of their wicked works. That was 9-11. 9-11 was totally set up. All right. 9-11 is only recently people are really starting to wake up to that fact, okay? That was totally set up by the government. In, in this case, the top wicked elite. They totally set that thing up. That was a that was an exercise. And uh, you might say, well, why would they do that? Well, you have to understand that the New World Order, which is what they want us to be in the New World Order, really, we've, we've been in the New World Order since 1933. That's what the government don't tell the people. Um, the motto of the New World Order is Ordo Ab Chao. What does that mean? That is Latin for order through chaos. So you have to create the chaos to scare the people into order. Okay, it's also called um, problem, reaction, solution. In other words, you create a problem which will generate reaction of the people. Then you, who created the problem, come with the solution. Okay, this, this is the formula that the wicked elite uses. So 9-11 was a perfect example of that. They created the problem. It generated a fearful reaction. And then they came with the solution. What was the solution? Well, there's many pieces of draconian legislation that was passed after 9-11. You had Patriot Act 1, Patriot Act 2. You had more and more government surveillance over the people. That's what it's all about. Ultimately... The wicked elite want to totally strip the freedom, the so-called freedom, which is nothing but an illusion. They want to totally strip the so-called freedom of these people, especially you Israelites. They, essentially, they want to put us back in slavery. All right. That's what the wicked elite are trying to do of Esau, Edom. And what that amounts to is them, the Edomites, trying to get back their birthright, which they lost to our forefather, Jacob. See? And... Um, you can read about that in a, there's an article called The Master Plan of the Illuminated Rothschilds. You can find that on Google, 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 The Master Plan of the Illuminated Rothschilds, Ron Patton interviews Marion Knox. And Marion Knox breaks it down to Ron Patton about the Rothschilds, how they're trying to get back their birthright. Okay, so that's what the New World Order is all about. The birth, they're, them getting back. The wicked elites of Esau, which they know that they're the Edomites, and they know that they lost their birthright to our forefather Jacob. So they're trying to get back their birthright. See? So that's what the New World Order is all about. That's what they're trying to bring. All right? And that's why they're trying to put us, us Israelites, back in slavery. Okay? So it says they encourage themselves in an evil matter. So what, it, what is the evil matter? They create chaos. And the chaos will generate the, re the reaction of the people. And based upon the reaction of the people, they come with the solution. And what is the solution? More government control. More government control. That's what it's all about. So that's the evil matter. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privately, traps. They say, who shall see them? Right, because they do these things behind closed doors. They do these things behind secret societies. All right. You have right now, well, actually next month, the last two weeks in July, you have a secret society called the Bohemian Grove. And they're going to meet there. All right. Uh, they're going to have these discussions and, and whatnot of how they're going to bring more and more chaos into society to scare the rest of the people into accepting their new world order. Okay, that again, that, that's what it's all about. And more and more people are waking up to this. Problem, reaction, solution. So there you go. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privately. Again, they meet in these different 
uh, groups, these different secret society groups. Okay, the Bilderberger group, the uh, Skull and Bones group, the Bohemian Grove group. Okay, uh, the commune of laying snares privately. They say who shall see them. Right, again, secret societies. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep, meaning deep in wickedness. Okay, they're very smart in wickedness. And the reason why they're very smart in wickedness is because the Heavenly Father have given them that power on the left-hand side. When you understand the scriptures, you understand that the Heavenly Father controls both sides, good as well as evil. I Isaiah 45 and 7, the Heavenly Father said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the knowledge of wickedness that the top wicked elite of Esau have goes back to the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side. See, the left-hand side of the Heavenly Father represents evil, wickedness. The right-hand side of the Heavenly Father represents righteousness. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about the Heavenly Father. It's called duality. All right, The Heavenly Father controls both sides, created both sides for His purpose. Yes, the Heavenly Father created evil for His purpose. And He uses the Edomites to uh, push that evil on the planet Earth. You know, the power uh, filters down from the Heavenly Father to Satan, and from Satan filters down to the Edomites, beginning with these top banking families. All right, so reading on, it says, But the Heavenly Father shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. How are they going to be wounded? Now, here's where predictive programming comes into place. Here's where it comes into place. It says, So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. So that's an example of predictive programming, where they're showing you what they're about to do before they do it. And it's only to those that are in the know. Okay, it's a message to those that are in the know. As we're about to see in this example given by the brother Yahweh Kanan. Okay, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. One of the ways they do that is in these movies. All right, if you know what to look for, you can spot the predictive programming. What does it mean, predictive? Meaning what they're about to do. You're being programmed to what they're about to do. When, when I say they, meaning the wicked elite, the chaos that they're about to create. You're being programmed in certain shows. The Simpsons is, is great for examples of predictive programming. All right, there's a video where uh, the Simpsons had, the Simpsons, <laughs> the Simpsons, the Simpsons, right, the uh, uh, TV show called The Simpsons, right, where an episode predicted the coming of 9-11, okay? And there are many other examples. I'm sure brothers who watch uh, The Simpsons and are familiar with the different examples of predictive programming, they can put it in the comment section, okay, of this video and put where you referenced it. Don't just put the idea and you, you're not given the source from where you reference it. We don't do that here at Great Millstone. If you make a statement, uh, uh, you know, put the source of where the, the statement that you made, put the source so we can all go check it out and everyone can be edified. All right. We don't wing it. We don't wing it over here at Great Millstone, man. All right. So Psalm 64, right? So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Again, that's an example of predictive programming. All that see them shall flee away. See? Because you, you see in the predictive programming, you're like, oh man, this, this, this devil, he's getting ready to do something real nasty. Okay? You, you're hip to this devil. And all men shall fear, see? And shall declare the work of the Heavenly Father. Yeah, because really it's the work of the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side. As it is written, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? The Heavenly Father controls men. All right? The way of man is not in himself. That's Jeremiah 10 and 23. So the big question is who controls man? Whether he does righteousness or wickedness. The Heavenly Father. The only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai said, a sparrow don't fall to the ground unless the Heavenly Father sanctions it. So that shows you, and a sparrow is a very small, insignificant bird. But that shows you that the Heavenly Father controls everything. If he sanctions the death of an insignificant sparrow, 
then he controls everything. There's nothing that don't go down, whether it be righteousness or wickedness. There's nothing that don't go down on the planet Earth that the Heavenly Father don't have a hand in. The Heavenly Father created and controls Satan for his purpose. All right? He created and controls Satan for his purpose. And again, a lot of people don't know that, especially the wacky-tacky Christian. They don't know that. That's why in Jeremiah 4 and 22, what does it say? My people are sottish children. They have not known me. Talking about these Israelites out here. All right? They don't know the Heavenly Father. Okay? Which makes them sottish. And, you know, when you really come to learn, and I'm speaking to you brothers that are new to this, and you sisters as well, when you really come to learn about the Heavenly Father, you learn to fear Him. You really do. You, you See, this is how we know these individuals in the wacky-tacky churches, they don't know the Heavenly Father because they say, I love the Lord. I, this, that's what you hear them say, I love the Lord. No, when you come to truly learn of the Heavenly Father, I mean truly learn about Him and His only begotten Son, you learn to fear them, fear them with a petrified fear, okay? So that's the difference, all right? Uh, why do you think it just, it said it right here, the ninth verse. And all men shall fear, fear, and shall declare the work of the Heavenly Father. Truly, when you see the works of the Heavenly Father, whether it be righteous or wicked, you learn to fear the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. For they shall wisely consider of His doing. Exactly. We wisely consider that the Heavenly Father is working in tandem with Esau to bring this wickedness, all right, to bring this chaos, to bring this trouble, okay? And also, that's written in Isaiah the 10th chapter. So this is very powerful, man. You are getting the 100% truth right now, even as I speak, concerning the events that are happening. And some horrific events are coming down the pike, which the Heavenly Father is going to be at, at the helm of it, the control of it, on the left-hand side. He's going to use Esau to bring these horrific events, which a lot of those horrific events are going to serve to punish his people, the Israelites. Okay, I'm talking about, uh, uh, I'm talking about um, uh, blackouts. I'm talking about um, martial law troops. All right, I'm talking about uh, terrorist attacks. All right, dirty bombs going off. Oh man, oh uh, look, a Pandora's box of evils. <laughs> look that term up, Pandora's box. A Pandora's box of evils are about to come on this planet Earth. And it's all prophesied in the scriptures by the prophets. Okay? So, there you go. Alright, so let's get back to the video. So now you know what predictive programming is. I, I gave you an example according to scripture. Psalm 64 and particularly the 8th verse. They shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. They shall tell upon themselves. A great, a great example of that is predictive programming. What does it say here? Predictive programming uh, is a theory, actually it's a fact, that the government or other higher-ups are using fictional movies or books as a mass mind control tool to make the population more accepting of planned future events. There you go. There you go. And uh, Alan Watt, which uh, I'm, I'm familiar with him. I, I Back in the day, we used to listen to his... Uh, his, his uh, uh, discussions, Alan Watt. Alan Watt, I believe he's from uh, Scotland. I think he has a, a Scottish accent. Alan Watt, who defines predictive programming as predictive programming, uh, is, a subtle, is a subtle form of psychological conditioning. A subtle form. But that's them telling on themselves, like it says in Psalm the 64th chapter. And it's the Heavenly Father that's putting the Spirit on them to tell on themselves. The Heavenly Father's putting the Spirit on them to create this predictive programming so they can warn others in the know of what's coming down the pike. You see how beautiful that is? Uh, predictive programming is a subtle form of psychological conditioning provided by the media to acquaint the public with planned societal changes. They're telling on themselves to be implemented by our leaders. See? See? How can you get around that? Okay? So, let's get back to the video and look at some examples of predictive programming. Or at least one example. Let's get back to... Uh, bear with me for a minute. Again, at its best, right? Now, the headline you see here on the Daily Mirror 
which I'm going to let Yawa Khan explain it. He, he does a far better job than, than, than I could. Okay, he's going to explain it. The, the Daily Mirror article that you see here is an example of predictive programming. Let's check it out. In this episode of Black Mirror, which was just released, season six just came out three or four days ago. The episode is called Demon 79. All right. It's the last of the six episodes in season six. Or the five episodes in season six. So they are show, they're showing you predictive programming. Predictive programming. All right. Which we should all know what that means by now. Predictive programming, which we are seeing in this episode regarding the war of Armageddon. Regarding the war of Armageddon, we are seeing this predictive programming in full, full motion in this episode. So why do I say that? Now pay attention. Yawa Khan is going to explain why he calls this example here from the TV show Black Mirror, why he calls it predictive programming. Okay. The paper, the newspaper that you see on the screen is the main, one of the biggest newspapers in the United Kingdom. This is like the New York Post, or you can even say uh, the New York Post, or the, or the New York, not, what's the other one? You've got the New York Post, and there's another one. This paper is sold all over England, basically. This is a national newspaper, the Daily Mirror. Now, this particular Black Mirror episode is called Demon 79. Because it's based on the year 1979. That's why it's called Demon 79. So, what, who you see on the screen there is a police officer reading a newspaper while he's in the laboratory, right? And as you can see on the front page of the newspaper, what does it say? It says, as clashes in the Gulf intensify... Russia, no backing down. I say again, look on the front of the newspaper, the headline. It says, as clashes in the Gulf intensify, Russia, no backing down. So we know that the war of Armageddon is going to take place in the Gulf, in the Middle East. That's right. In what the Most High has referred to as the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Yahweh. Right. And you can find that in the book of Joel, the... Uh uh, third chapter where it speaks about multitudes, multitudes in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which is known today as the Persian Gulf. Uh, God's judgment, the Valley of God's judgment or the Valley of Decision, which is the Middle East. Now, this is predictive programming at its best. These, these elites know that they are going to bring on World War III. Mm -hmm. And this is once again a message that they are showing to their fellow elites out there Right, on the left hand side that this thing is going to go down now what I did I thought let me check if that headline on that newspaper was an actual real headline in 1979 in the Daily Mirror now listen carefully listen to this and again when I saw this when I saw this video as he was going into it I said oh man this one scripture came to mind it's found in the book of I'll give you a hint it's found in the book of Obadiah Okay, so let's move on. So I went into the um, British Archives newspaper database to bring up all of the newspapers, all of the newspapers of that year. So this is what I did. Let me just show you the screen, right? I'm going to come back to this, right? This is what I did. I went here to the British Archive newspapers of 1979. For the Daily Mirror. So this is the British newspaper archive for all the newspapers in the United Kingdom, going back to when they first printed them. And I went to the year 1979. So if you're looking at it carefully, beginning with uh, the second day, it looks to be the second day of uh, 1979. Tuesday, 02, January 1979. Right, let's move on. To look to see if there was any headlines, headlined paper that actually said that, just to make sure Let me bring there it wasn't back. you. To 
look to see if there was any headlines to the British Archive newspapers of 1979 for the Daily Mirror. So this is the British newspaper archive for all the newspapers in the United Kingdom, going back to when they first printed them. And I went to the year 1979 to look to see if there was any headlines, headlined paper that actually said that, just to make sure they wasn't using a headline from actual 1979, something that happened in 1979 that we didn't know about. And I went through them from January all the way to the end. All the way. That's June. I went through all of them, all of the headline papers. That's October. All the way to the end. Just to show you. That's November. That's December. All the way to December 31st, 1979, to see if I found that headline anywhere in any of the papers that came out in the in the Daily Mirror. Was it a, was it a headline in the Daily Mirror paper in 1979? And I couldn't find it anywhere. Hmm. So that satisfied my curiosity that this wasn't a headline that they took from 1979 and they was using in this show for Black Mirror because it was based in 1979. That's why it's called Demon 79. Couldn't find it anywhere which told me, which made me confirm to myself that this is another high end of predictive programming. This is a message that they're giving out to the elites on the left-hand side that this war is coming. The war of Armageddon is coming. And what was the message? That Russia is not going to back down. And um, that's according to Bible prophecy. The fact that Russia is not going to back down because the Heavenly Father is going to use Russia to bring on World War Three, okay. If you go in the book of Ezekiel, the uh, thirty-eight chapter, now that's very interesting that Yahweh Kanan did that experiment. He went back to nineteen seventy-nine each month, each day of the month, for the year of nineteen seventy-nine, for the Daily Mirror, which is like he said, it's a very popular newspaper in Great Britain, and there was not one article that they showed in. Uh, Black Mirror, the TV show, there was not one article that matched what they showed in Black Mirror uh, TV show. Okay? So, in other words, that was made up. What you, the scene in the, in the TV show, Black Mirror, where the uh, police person, I believe he said it was, was reading the newspaper, the article you see in front, that was made up. Because Yahweh Conan went back to 1979 to find the actual article and it didn't exist. Now, what did the article say? Russia is not going to back down. World War III is, 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 uh, is inevitable. Imminent. That's the word I was looking for. It's inevitable. It's imminent. Okay? And sure it is. Because it's according to Bible prophecy. Remember, the, uh, Yahweh Shai said, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass till all be fulfilled. So, if we go in the book of Ezekiel 38, look at the subheading, prophecy about God and future invasion of Israel, because Russia has to invade Israel and then ultimately America. And both is going to be destroyed, Israel and America, but one is going to be rebuilt, that's Israel, Right? It's going to be rebuilt after the destruction, but America is not going to be rebuilt. America is going to remain 100% desert, and that's pursuant to Isaiah, the 34th chapter. So, of course, of course, Russia is not going to back down. This is the book of Ezekiel 38 and 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, which represents Russia today. Okay, and there's a reason for that, but I'm not going to go into that right now. The chief prince of Misha and Tubal. Now, when you go into the name Russia, and it was Elder Pastor first brought that information out. When you go into the name Russia, it literally means head prince. As in chief prince, like it says here, of Misha and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, thus saith the Lord God, which his name is Yahweh, 
Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief, excuse me, the chief prince of Misha and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. So right now you have this president or prime minister, or whatever the title is for the Russian leader, um, Vladimir Putin. And the spirit on him is to bring, he, he actually said this, he said, I want to bring back Mother Russia. I want to bring back imperialist Russia. That's the spirit that's on the man. And the reason why that spirit is on that man is because the Heavenly Father put the spirit on that man. There's a scripture where it says, the heart of the king is in the, heart, is in the hand of the Heavenly Father. Again, they have, there's nothing that don't go down, the Heavenly Father don't control. He controls everything. So the reason why Vladimir Putin has that spirit on him because it goes back to the Heavenly Father who put that spirit on him to bring back imperialist Russia, Mother Russia. Okay, so that's an example of what it says here. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and, will, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen. So Vladimir Putin is in the spirit of building this, this uh, imperialist Russia complete with a, a menacing army. Okay, that's the spirit that's on the man. And, and that goes back to Bible prophecy, uh, where it says horses and horsemen. That's a metaphor for the, for, for the uh, you know the uh, tanks that Russia has, the the superior nuclear weapons they have, the the different weapons of war. That's a uh, the horses and horsemen is a metaphor for that. Okay, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. There you go, the the missiles, the the, the war machine, the war machinery of Russia. Okay. Even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, the war machine of Russia, right? Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. So you're going to have countries joining with Russia, siding with Russia to help defeat Israel and ultimately America, which both countries, uh, Israel and America, is hated by the so-called Russians and the so-called Persians, which today is known as the Iranians. Persia is known as Iran today. I think it was the name Persia uh, was changed in 1935 to Iran. Okay. Uh, Ethiopia and Libya. So those countries, they're going to side with Russia against Israel and America. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Again, that's a metaphor for their war machinery, right? Goma and all his bands, the House of Togoma and of the North Quarters and all his bands. And many people with thee, those are the allies of Russia. Be thou prepared and prepare thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard against them. So Russia is going to be a guard against all those nations that's, that's going to side with her to come against Israel and ultimately America. Because if you come against Israel, then ultimately you're coming against America. Because Israel supports America. Okay? Or rather, America, I said that wrong. America supports Israel, okay? That's what I meant to say. America supports Israel, okay? America's been giving Israel billions and billions of dollars to support that tiny state, okay? Which that's, that state is not according to biblical Israel that the Bible say will rise very shortly, okay? That was a, created, uh, a state that was created by the Rothschilds, the wicked elite, okay? That's not the state that the Bible is talking about in the latter days, the nation of Israel shall raise up. Okay, that's not that. Okay, 1948 was not the fulfillment of Isaiah, the second chapter. Okay, and that's another video for another time. And after many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. That would be the land of Israel. So Russia eventually is going to invade Israel. Russia eventually is going to invade Israel. This is what we're reading here. And it's gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste. Right, the land over there has always been waste. Why? Because the true people, the, the true Israelites, uh, on the whole, is not in that land. A lot of heathens in that land. You, you got the so-called Arabs, uh, uh, which they're nothing but heathens. And the so-called white man, Esau, the Edomites, they're nothing but heathens fighting over our land. Tells you that in Isaiah, the first chapter, your, your country is desolate, your land strangers devoured in your presence. That's a message to us, the real Israelites. Who are the strangers? I, I just told you, the Edomites and the so-called Arabs, okay, fighting over our land, okay? 
uh, you had something called the Balfour Declaration where the land was divided. One section, the, uh, the so-called Jews took, which are Edomites, they took. They took the best section, by the way, and they left the rest to the so-called Arabs. They're both fighting over our land. That land belongs to us. Okay? So since then, that land has always been waste. In other words, the land of Israel has never been the same since 70 AD. Okay? To this very day. That's why you had something called the kibbutz. Look that up. Where they had to import trees and they had to import... Uh, they had to import, uh, you know, plantation, for lack of a better term, trees, uh, vegetation into that land because it's always been barren it's nothing but a really really it's nothing but a desert okay like it says here which have always been waste that land is going to be beautified when the true israelites go back to that land and that's pursuant to isaiah the 35th chapter once again the land of israel will be a garden of eden like it was in the past during the time of adam and eve when you read about the garden of eden Eden is a Hebrew word, Aidan, which means joy or paradise of the earth. The Garden of Eden was the land of Israel. Okay, beginning with uh, the, the, the center city, all right, uh, 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 Jerusalem, all right. It was once a Garden of Eden, the most beautiful land on the planet earth. But it's become what? A desert, a waste, because uh, heathens have hijacked our land, have taken over our land. All right, namely the Edomites and then the Ishmaelites and even the Hamites. Okay, they have taken over our land. So when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to get them the hell out of there. And the real Israelites, pursuant to Isaiah, the 14th chapter, the first verse, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. See, we're a nation in exile. Okay, we're over here in the Americas where we really don't belong. We belong back in the Middle East particularly in the land of Israel. That's our land. So Yahweh Shai, when he takes down Esau, the Edomites, he's going to bring his elect, beginning with them, the elect of the nation of Israel, he's going to bring them back to Israel in their own land. And then that land is going to begin to be beautified. Okay, it's going to go back to being the Garden of Eden like it was in the past. So this, this is a beautiful thing. So it says, it's gathered out, many, out of many people, the mountains of Israel, which have, uh, which have been always waste, but is, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely. All of them, thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. That's the Russians and their army, along with their allies. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Yeah, they're going to invade the land of Israel. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God: It shall come to pass that at the same time. So at the same time, while the Russians are invading the land of Israel, right? Imperialist Mother Russia, remember what Vladimir Putin said, uh, that at the same time things co shall come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. Talking about the Russians, they will think an evil thought, right? What, what is that thought? And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. What land is that? The land of America, America. So it's going to come into the mind of the Russians and we believe this guy, Vladimir Putin, is going to set it off. He has the right kind of charm. He's that guy, okay? And we just have to watch and see. But he's going to think eventually to invade America. And that, that's where things are really going to pick off, okay? <laughs> uh, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. That's America. Why is it called unwalled villages? Because each state, all it, all it has to separate it is not a fence, or a wall, all it has to separate it is signs saying, welcome to this state, welcome to that state. Once you leave, like case in point, we have to go, uh, you know, the elders, we live in um, Connecticut, right? We have to go to New York to go and teach the word. Every time we go to New York, there's always this sign that says, welcome to New York, once you cross the border. But there's no wall there, there's no fence there. So that's an example of an unwalled village, okay? Uh, it says, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. There you go. I will go to them that are at rest. That's America. America's at rest, man. America's really fun land. And that was a video that, that I'm looking to do. Uh, you know, uh, America's uh, fun land. Goes back to, um, goes back to uh, the cartoon um, uh, Pinocchio, where you had a place called uh, fun land. Anyway, that's 
for another video that I'm going to do. I will go to them that are at rest. That's America. America is the, the, the uh, party land, fun land that dwells safely. All of them dwelling without walls. I already explained that. And having neither bars, nor gates. I already explained that. To take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine, heart, thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Again, that's America. So this is one of the reasons why Russia will not back down. As it says in the article uh, that you saw, the still that Yawakanan showed you from the movie Black Mirror, which really didn't exist back in 1979. So like Yawakanan said, that was an example of predictive programming. And we looked up the definition of predictive programming. It's a message to those that are in the know, this is what's about to come down the pipe. Russia is not going to give up, so World War III is inevitable, see? And it was the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahusha that got on Yahweh to do that experiment. And again, it, it reminds me of a scripture, all right, which I'm going to share with you, but let's get back to the video. All right. I can't play what I'm showing you. I can only show it to you, right? Because if I play it to you, I'll get a strike. I can only show you what it shows you here. So in the show, they've got the headline as clashes in the Gulf intensify Russia, no backing down. Now, I would implore you to watch that episode of Black Mirror season six that just came out, Demon 79 it's called. And then when the show finished, this is how it finished, right? I won't spoil and tell you what it's all about, but this is how it finished. This is how it finished. Hold on. Let's open it up. Can you see that? Those are nuclear missiles coming through the sky, striking. What we are looking at is, is obviously England, right? Places in England. Those are atomic bombs that are hitting their targets. If we go back a little bit more. Let's see. Can you see the missiles? These are the missiles flying through the sky. So Russia is not only going to attack Israel, Russia is also going to attack America and England. Why? Because England, well, America came out of England. When you read about the seven heads and then you read about the eighth head, and the, the eighth head came out of one of the seven. England or America came out of England. America is the eighth head. And Great Britain was the seventh head. And the eighth head, which is uh, America, came out of Great Britain, England. And then it says, it goeth into perdition, which means destruction. Now, if we go back to Ezekiel 38, the Lord said he's going to use Russia... Uh, he's going to use Russia to destroy to destroy um, Israel and America. Let's read Ezekiel 38 and 15. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts. He's talking about Russia. Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses. That's the, the military war machine of Russia and its allies. Persia, which is Iran today, Ethiopia, right? All the countries that's going to side with Russia to come against Israel and ultimately America and Great Britain. Uh, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. What time period are we in, people? The latter days. And I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me. Because the Heavenly Father is going to create this action to magnify his name. Just like he created the action of destroying Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, which is the Gulf of Suez, the most northern part of the Red Sea. That action served to magnify the Heavenly Father's name. After that, that destruction on Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, the name of the Heavenly Father was magnified. Yahweh was magnified. Everyone knew that name. So it's the same thing now. This destruction that the Heavenly Father is going to bring using Esau 
will serve to magnify his name. Once again, everyone will know the name Yahweh, but this time they'll know Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Because the Heavenly Father is sending back Yahweh Shai to bring his own brand of destruction in those nuclear, um, in those chariots. So not only are you going to have the nuclear missiles bringing fire, you're going to have the chariots too, the so-called UFOs bringing fire. And between both is going to engulf this place, America, 100% in fire. That's why America uh, is going to be known, as the Bible calls it, the lake of fire. When you read about the lake of fire, it's talking about America. America's future is to be a lake of fire. When the Apostle John saw it in his vision, he saw this, this country, this place, as a lake of fire. So many missiles are going to hit this place from Russia and its allies. And when you bring in the chariots of the Lord, Zechariah, the fifth chapter, which is going to enter into this land, the chariots of the Lord are going to shoot fire beams, laser beams down on the land, destroying everything in its path, coupled with the nuclear missiles. You can clearly see how this place is going to be turned into a lake of fire. And the wacky tacky Christians don't even understand that. They don't even know what the lake of fire means that they read about in the scriptures. Anyway, Ezekiel 38 and um, 16 again. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified. This is the part. In the Ogog before their eyes. So that's another reason why Russia cannot back down. As the article said in the still from the movie or TV show, rather, Black Mirror. Okay, which didn't exist back in 1979, as Yahweh Khan found out, because he did the research. So this is another reason why Russia will not back down, because Russia has to fulfill prophecy. The Lord said, I'm going to use you, Russia, and I'm going to be sanctified in you before their eyes. Meaning, I'm going to magnify my name and my son's name. And by the way, sanctified means purified. That's what the missiles and the, and the fire from the chariots, that's what they're going to do. They're going to serve to purify the earth. The fire from the missiles and the fire from the chariots. They're both going to purify the earth. So it's beautiful, man. It is so beautiful when you, when you know what to look for and you understand what's coming. Okay, prophecy is beautiful. All right, let's get back to the video. And then we see them hit their targets. And then, and do we want this to come? Absolutely, because we want the earth to be purified. I just read to you Second Peter three and thirteen. We look for a new, a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So this earth that we're in right now has to be purified. There's a scripture where it says the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. And Esau has been ruling this earth. He has defiled this earth. He's got chemtrails in the air. The, he's got the food all polluted with GMOs. No, the, 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 the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, has to bring that fire to purify this earth. Okay? As it comes to the end, as you can see the people, because they didn't believe it was going to take place. I won't spoil it, but this police officer who was reading the newspaper earlier that I showed you the clip of, right? They was interviewing a woman. She was telling them about this event that was going to take place. And they thought she was a nutcase. And they left her They left her in the interview room and they was getting ready to call the um, the psych ward to come and take her away. <laughs> so when they was left the interview room, they were on their way back into the main office in the police station to get the policewoman to make that call. So the detective was going to get the policewoman to make the call to the psych ward say, look, come and collect this woman because she's, she's completely gone up her head. And then everything that she was saying, they as they came into the main police office, they saw, they heard the sirens going off, and then they saw the missiles coming through the sky. And then, where is it? Hold on. I just see they're getting closer. Can you see the shock on their face, on all the people's faces? They're totally in shock. So we'll get to the part here. Can you see the heat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So according to uh, this scene from the series Black Mirror, the destruction happened in 1979. That's why it's called Demon 79. All right, which, like I said, and like Yahweh Kanan said, 
he went to check the headlines of 1979 Daily Mirror newspapers and there was not one article that matched the article that you saw in this uh, example here. So they contrived it. They made it up. They, they did something called, or what is called in Hollywood, creative licensing. Creative licensing. Okay? Because obviously this TV show is based upon, uh, you know, actual events. Right? Based upon. Right? But the point I'm making is the destruction that you're witnessing that didn't take place back in 1979. That destruction is about to happen now. Eventually, Russia will shoot missiles on Israel, America, and Great Britain. And it's all prophesied in the scriptures. As a matter of fact, the missiles are part of the Lord's army. You, excuse me, you can read about that in Joel, the second chapter. The nuclear missiles are part of the Lord's army. That's why the Heavenly Father has a title called the Lord of Sabaoth. Sabaoth means troops. So the Heavenly Father has many examples of his different army people are his army the angels are his army and the nuclear missiles which he gave the technology to Esau to build is part of his army Isaiah 54 and 16 the heavenly father gave Esau the technology to build these nuclear missiles all right to bring about his work as a matter of fact in Isaiah 54 and 16 it says he has created the waster to, to destroy that is the nuclear missile so, you, you know, recently you have this movie Oppenheimer. You know, the Oppenheimers, the Oppenheimer family, they were used, which is a, a ruling class family, a royal family. As a matter of fact, the Rothschild family, they got their start. When you do research, they got their start from the Oppenheimer family. Mayim Shelbao is a junior partner with the Oppenheimers. I've seen family trees uh, of the Oppenheimers that go back to the 1300s, 1400s. Okay, so Isaiah 54 and 16, you know, that film dealing with the Oppenheimer is uh, talking about, I believe it's talking about Robert Oppenheimer who witnessed uh, uh, the uh, birth of the um, atomic warfare. And I believe he quoted the Bhagavad Gita, this, uh, a line from the Bhagavad Gita, I am become the destroyer of worlds. I believe that's how it went down. Okay. But this is Isaiah 54 and 16. What does it say here? It says, Behold, I have created the smith. This is the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He said, Behold, I have created the smith. That's the scientist that bloweth the coals in the fire that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. What's that called today? A nuclear missile. And you have different kind of missiles. You have the Scud missile. You have the Tomahawk. You have, the, you have a missile called the Nation. Okay? So you have different kinds of missiles like it says here, that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Whose work? The Heavenly Father's work. Number one, to destroy Esau's kingdom, his society, bring it down to rubble. Number two, to cleanse the earth, purify the earth for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. What's the waster? The nuclear missiles. All right. And, and again, that lines up with Zephaniah. The prophet Zephaniah saw the vision too. He said, a day of wasteness, a day of darkness. A day of gloominess, because once those missiles explode, along with the fire the chariots are going to bring, the, the, the sun is going to be blocked out by all the smoke that's going to arise from the burning of these nuclear missiles. The burning of the fires. There's a scripture where it says, the elect shall glorify the Lord through the fires, because they're going to be delivered. And by the way, that's the real, uh, that's the real example of salvation. You got these wacky-tacky Christians talking about salvation. They don't understand the term salvation. Yahweh Shai means he is the deliverer. He's, he's the one bringing the salvation. What's the salvation? For the elect of the nation of Israel, pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30, to be delivered through those nuclear missiles. They're literally going to go through the fire. Glorify ye the Lord through the fires. But they're going to be in chariots. All right, we're going to watch again Psalm, the 91st chapter. Only with thine eyes shall thou see the reward of the wicked. What's the reward of the wicked? Total devastation, total annihilation, total destruction. America being at the center peak, 100% of this place will be destroyed. But the Lord is going to deliver his elect from this place. He's going to deliver them through the fires. And that is the true meaning of salvation. And not just in America, all across the world. 
but America, 100% America will be destroyed by those nuclear missiles. So that's the true meaning of salvation. And the wacky tacky Christian doesn't understand that. Okay, so let's get back to the video. There you go. That's them witnessing the destruction. So those are nukes that were hitting places in England, basically, during the war of Armageddon. Predictive programming. These yeah. elites know this is coming. Right. And this is why I have... And it didn't happen back in 1979. It's about to happen now. That's why uh, you have the term called the last days. The last days of what? Esau's society, Esau's kingdom. All right. A day of brightness, right? A day, also a day of darkness. You know, the, the heavenly father's come on fire. Luke 12 and 49. The fire is going to come from them chariots, the so-called UFOs, and the missiles. Okay? To look into the newspaper, see if, and if there was any headlines referring to that headline that was in the paper. So they showed you the headline in the paper in this show saying, as clashes in the Gulf intensify, and then it said Russia not backing down. Right? As we know, the war of Armageddon is going to take place in the Middle East and the Russians are going to come up against America and its NATO allies to fight that war. Israel and Iran are going to be the nations that are going to draw them down into that Middle East, into that war. Right? Exactly. Uh, the worst, the, the least of the heathen shall draw them out. And that's the tiny state of Israel, which is a problem for everyone. I hope they don't take that video down because I said that. So... Eventually, Israel, the state of Israel, which was created back in 1948, which is a joke, eventually they're going to draw all these nations to fight each other, particularly Russia and America. They're going to fight each other and ultimately destroy each other. Okay, and it's, in, it's within that that Yahweh is going to come and destroy many people on the planet Earth. But the angels, they're going to contain the destruction. They're going to control it. You know, to purify the earth. Remember, I make he a new heavens. The earth is not going to be totally destroyed, people. I Ecclesiastes 1 and 4 says the earth abideth forever. No, parts of the earth are going to be destroyed. Namely, America, 100% of it. Israel is going to be destroyed too. But unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. Isaiah the 35th chapter. Okay, so we, we know the future, man. We can see the th future through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 10, he has revealed these things to us through his spirit. So we have the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. That's why we can freely know these secrets of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, because we have his spirit. We've been given his spirit through this knowledge. Okay? Into the war of Armageddon. So th this was definitely a message that these elites were giving out to those on the left hand side to say, look, Absolutely. we're nearly there. We're nearly at that point. That I, and I wholeheartedly uh, believe that. And again, what inspired me to do this video was when he, when Yahweh Khan was bringing out all this information using the, uh, uh, the uh, energy of the TV series Black Mirror, the scene, immediately this scripture came to my mind. How are the things of Esau searched out? Because the Lord put the spirit on Yahweh Khan and searched that out. And he found out that that was, uh, that was really a, a, an example of predictive prog programming because there was no such article that you see in the TV show, there was no such article uh, of, you know, on the front of the uh, Daily Mirror back in 1979. Any month, any day of the month back in 1979, there was no article such as that. He researched it thoroughly. So at this point, like he said, it's an example of Esau's predictive programming for this, for the future, for now. And the, the reason, you know, the way he was able to search that out is according to Bible prophecy, Isaiah, I'm sorry, Obadiah 1 and 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? What is one of the things of Esau? Predictive programming. In other words, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Sunday, Yahweh Shai, is going to put the Spirit on them to reveal themselves. Okay, and that was Psalm 64. That's why earlier I read Psalm 64. That's exactly what it says. The Lord's going to put the Spirit on them to reveal their own selves. Okay? So again, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? So Yahweh Kanan dug up a hidden thing, okay, and proved this point. 
all right predictive programming okay that's what you that's what you're seeing here the things the hidden things of esau are, sought, are searched out sought out we know this is coming because this is all bible prophecy the hidden things of esau are searched out through the spirit and power of yahweh bashim yashai and that's how we're able to know okay this was definitely a message that the elites were giving out to their people to let them know and for those of us that are in the know those of us that are woken up to this truth that's why we watch these different types of shows because we are know there are subliminal messages there are predictive yep. programming messages that are being given out that the elites are indicating how close they are in bringing about the war of armageddon and right and um this point i want to make and uh, again, Psalm the 64th chapter, the Lord said he's going to put the spirit on their, on these wicked elites to reveal their own self. All right. So shall they make their own tongue to fall upon themselves at the behest of who? The Heavenly Father on the left hand side. Heavenly Father's putting the spirit on them to reveal themselves. I'm talking about the wicked elite of Esau, beginning with the top banquet families. Oh man, all kind of information has come, down, come out in recent years on the international banquet families. Earlier, I talked about program reaction solution, auto app KO. That's part of the uh, the machine that the wicked elite uses to scare the people. That's being revealed. That that has been exposed. More and more people are waking up to the the uh, the skullduggery, right? The the dynamics of the wicked elite, how they do their thing, how they scare these people into doing their will, you know, doing the will of the bankers, the will of the wicked elite by being scared enough. Another great example was uh, the, the the pandemic. Another another example that scared people that which took place in 2020 that scared the people into taking that juicy juice, which within the juicy juice we believe it's straight up poison, and eventually all the people that took it eventually it, it will take root in their bodies and bring bring about their demise, and that goes back to population control. Again, you had something called the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, it was a series of commandments. Uh, I think it was about 10 of them. And the first one was maintain humanity under 500 million. Presently, there's almost, what, 8 billion people on the planet Earth. So 7.5 billion people got to go. They got to die. The wicked elite feel there's too much people. So they want to dumb, dumb down the numbers. They, wanna, they, want, they, they call it the great cullen. When you, when you look up the term cullen, that tells you everything you need to know. The great cullen. Okay, where people have to be systematically uh, exterminated. There's too many of them. Okay, so could the juicy juice play a part of that? Absolutely. Remember, Esau's blessing is what? The sword. Genesis 27 and 40. The sword represents destruction. That's his blessing. So there's nothing for Esau to de destroy people, to kill them, murder them, however he does it. That's his spirit. Okay, so... <laughs> Obviously, the mark of the beast, the microchip, right, which will proceed, will come out prior to that war, before those nukes are fired. The mark of the beast will be implemented on a global scale before we see that take place, those nuclear missiles hit. And that's why it didn't happen back in 1979. Because every last prophecy in the scriptures must be fulfilled. The prophecy of the MOTB being made mandatory under the penalty of death, under the penalty of the armies of the martial law that's going to be uh, disseminated out here, especially in America, that's got to be fulfilled. The day is coming when that thing is going to be made mandatory. It's going to be the new uh, cash system, as it were. You know, uh, uh, hard cash is going to be done away with, as in dollar bills, and even the digital cash, the CBDC and all that, that's, that's nothing but a springboard to what they really want to do, which is Im implant you with a microchip. That's going to be done away, the CBDC. The new central bank digital, digital currency will be that chip. Because within, right on that chip, you'll have your credits and your debits. You'll have your money system right on that chip, along with all your information, who you are, what kind of diseases you have, everything about you, including your finances, will be on that chip. That's why... It makes so much sense that that is the mark of the beast and that you won't be able to conduct business or any kind of uh, uh, activity without that chip. That, that's where it's heading. 
He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that mark is also to identify you as a citizen of the new world order. Okay? I mean, it's it's, it's so plain. You, If you can't see it, then truly, Yahweh Shem Yahweh have blinded you. So, I just had to bring that out, boy. I thought when I watched that show, Demon 79, when I watched the last episode of Black Mirror yesterday, and I saw that, I thought, look at that, boy. These demons, boy. They are showing you in their predictive programming that they are there, they're ready. Because they're no longer showing you stuff and waiting 10, 20, 30 years for it to happen. Mm -hmm. The stuff that they're showing you now normally happens within a couple of years. All right? This is how the Lord said he shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. That's what predictive programming is all about. But you got to be in the know to pick up the examples of predictive programming. You got to be in the know. You got to know what the hell is going on. This is why the Bible tells us to watch as well as pray. These are the things that we're watching. We're watching the actions of the wicked elite because we know the Heavenly Father controls them on the left-hand side. Okay, we're well, as it is written, we are not ignorant. Let's get that. 2 Corinthians 2, right? 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. See, we know, we, we know what to look for among the different events that they do. And most importantly, the scriptures that back it up. Okay, the prophecies in the Bible that back it up. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, which says this, least Satan, who's Satan in this case? Esau, the Edomites, beginning with the top banking families. There's Satan on, on the planet Earth. The word Satan means adversary. They're the top adversaries of the Heavenly Father. You know, they're the top adversaries of the Heavenly Father on the right-hand side. All right, the Heavenly Father is so bad that he created his own adversary. <laughs> now wrap your head around that one. You got the left hand coming against the right hand. <laughs> wow. Hey, truly the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai, is truly worthy to be feared, man. No doubt about that. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Least Satan should get an advantage of us. Us. We that's in this knowledge is true. We that's hoping to be delivered from the wrath of the Heavenly Father through that destruction. That's why we call ourselves the hopeful elect. All right, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. There you go. We're not ignorant of his devices. What's his device? Auto app kale. How he does uh, the machine of how he does his wicked works to scare people to accept in his order. We're not ignorant of it. Now, before we came to knowledge, we didn't know about that stuff. But now, since we've come into knowledge, and the Heavenly Father Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai has revealed it to us, now we understand. Oh, so that's how they do that thing. That's how they're able to scare the people into accepting whatever order the government comes with. Oh, okay, so it's all contrived. It's all, it's a plan. It's a plot. Oh, okay, I get it now. See? So there you go. We're not ignorant of the devices of Satan. Another device is predictive programming. See? How I've seen how they've been operating recently over the last five, ten years. Anything they show you within two or three years, that particular thing is there. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so... We're at the door, family. We're at the door. Truly, this is why I say you can't let your faith. Don't let them break your faith. I'm going to bring out a few scriptures. Oh, no. Now is not the time to lose faith, man. Uh, uh, how's that scripture go? We see, damn, uh, we see uh, that day approach. As you see that day approaching. Let's get let's get that. And then I'm going to end this video. I, I certainly didn't intend for it to be this, this long, but hopefully you hung in there and you were edified. That's That's what counts. Uh, as you see the day approaching, the day approaching. Now ain't the time to lose your faith in any way, shape, or form. Especially if you've been in this thing for a while. There it is right here. The book of Hebrews 10 and 25. It says, the, these are the words of Apostle Paul. It says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. That's why it's so important to get with the brotherhood. As the manner of some is, because you got certain guys who don't care to be around the brotherhood. But exhorting one another, right? But exhorting one another. My channel is called what? The Daily Advocation Exhortation. That's my main aim, to exhort you. And that's and hopefully this video served as an example of that, exhorting you. And at the same time, edifying you. But exhorting one another, and so much the more... Right? So we're supposed to be on fire doing this exhorting and edification. We're supposed to be on fire, literally. And so much the more 
as ye see the day approaching. What day? The day of Yahweh Shai, the day of destruction. We see it, man. And for you to see it, you have to have vision. You got to have vision inside Job to be able to see it. See? <laughs> see? <laughs> All right. So at this point, I'm going to let it go. I'd like to say the water to our brother Yahweh Kanan for the, the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shim Yahweh coming on the man to, to ferret that out, to suss that out. Uh, that that uh, uh, example of deception on the part of the of Black Mirror, but it served for edification. Okay, it, it lets you know that the wicked elite know inevitably that the destruction is coming. Another point that proves that is the fact that they've built bomb shelters to escape the destruction. We can read about the bomb shelters in the scriptures. All right, so they know the destruction is coming. Absolutely. All right, and that that example proves it. Okay, so on, on that note, on to the next one.